All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off on Friday. We got this far together, right? And then we need to figure out when f prime is zero or when it doesn't exist. But if it's sine and cosine, it's going to exist. So we just have a zero. So we're going to set it equal to zero. And we're going to factor. I have two terms here. What is my GCF? Sine. So I can factor out a sine of x. That leaves me with 2 cosine of x minus 1. Yes. It's yellow. OK. So now we need to use the zero product property. And we're going to set each one of those equal to 0. All right, so the sine of x equals 0. All right, and we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so the entire circle. When does sine equal 0? At 0 and at pi and at 2 pi. So at x equals 0 pi and 2 pi, All right? So then I set this one equal to 0. 2 times the cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So 2 cosine x equals 1. So cosine x equals 1 half. So x is really the cosine inverse of 1 half, right? Which means when does the cosine equal 1 half? Thank you. I don't think it's an emergency, so you can go, you can go during chemistry. <laughs> okay, what is it? Pi thirds. Okay, do you want to go now? Okay. <laughs> okay, so x equals, we decided it is pi thirds, right? And where else, so that's in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, is it positive or negative? Negative. What about third quadrant? Negative. So it has to be in 5 pi thirds. Very good. Okay. All right. So it's been a year. OK, so now I set up my little t-chart here, right? So I have to use the, B, the end point, which is 0, okay, which takes care of that one. I'm going to kind of mark them out as I go. And then what comes next out of these four that are left here? Pi thirds, good. Okay, so I use that one. Then pi, then 5 pi thirds. Then 2 pi. Okay. So remember, we're not just, we use 0 and 2 pi. They were here, but even if they weren't, we use them because it's the endpoints of the interval, right? So I have all of these things that I need to check. And I'm checking this with sine squared x plus cosine x. So if I want to find f of 0, okay, what's the sine of 0? zero and I square it and I get zero and then cosine of zero is one right so it's zero plus one that's one okay then when I want to do pi thirds what is the sine of pi thirds square root of three over two yes okay so when I square square root of three over two what do I get So it's square root of 3 over 2 squared, right? You get 3 over 4. What's the cosine of pi thirds? 1 half. So this is going to give me 3 fourths plus 1 half. So what is that? 5 fourths. Okay. Everybody good so far? So then when I do f of pi, well, what's the sine of pi? See, zero. 
and then I square it, and that's zero, right? So zero plus what's the cosine of pi? Negative one. Okay, so this is negative one. Right? Then when I want to do f of five pi thirds, well, if the, if pi if the sine of pi thirds is the square root of three over two, then the sine of five pi thirds is what? negative square root of 3 over 2. And then when I square that, I get, yeah, well, no, I get 3 fourths, right, when I square this negative square root of 3 over 2. And then what's the cosine of 5 pi thirds? 1 half still, right, because it's still positive. So I actually get the exact same thing as I did for 5 pi thirds because I squared that negative. And then what about 2 pi? What's the sine of 2 pi? 0. And then this cosine of 2 pi? 1, which makes this 1. Okay. Are we officially completely out of room to write anything else? Probably. Okay. So let's, let's just, let's talk about the answer then. Okay. Because um, I think we had to do that over here too. That the, because um, what are we looking for? What is this even asking us for? Mm -hmm. Absolute maximum and minimum on that interval. So the absolute maximum value is what? Five pi fourths. Or yeah, five fourths. Thank you. I just went, yeah, five fourths. Five fourths. <laughs> and that's at x equals pi thirds and x equals five pi thirds. So if you have room to hear, I'll write it. If you have room to write it, you can write it. So. And that's up to you. So I'm going to say um, absolute max is 5 fourths at x equals pi thirds and x equals 5 pi thirds. Okay. Absolute min. What's your absolute minimum value? Negative 1. And that's at x equals pi. Okay. What questions do you have? We're good? What is this? What we're doing today? We just had to finish up Fridays. Yes, it's notes. Yes, don't tell me no. Yes, sir. I know. You'd probably be doing that in some classes on this campus, too. And I always think, why don't I teach those classes, you know? This. Okie dokie. So. Before we get to the notes, I'm going to draw a picture that you do not have to draw. I just want you to stay with me and answer some questions that I may have here. Okay. Good job. I'm so proud of you. We know our alphabet. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's say that this graph is f of x. Okay. Are you all paying attention? This graph of f of, is f of x. Yes. No, let's not do that. Just give her a warning. This is your warning, Carolina. Maybe, or sine, or it could be a cubic. It could be a lot of things. I just put a squiggly up there. I wasn't trying to make anything specific. I was just trying to make a few curves. Um, <laughs> okay, so tell me on what intervals is this, is F increasing? Let, so let's just pretend that it goes like, let's pretend that it goes like this, yeah. So it's increasing from 
negative infinity to to b and then d to infinity or something yeah whatever okay um, oops look at me I'm writing all over there with my shirt i guess okay all right so then that would mean that it is decreasing from where to where b to d agree with that okay um when is this function positive a to c and e to infinity okay and it's negative from c to e and negative infinity to a we agree with all that when is this function zero okay okay y'all agree with all that yes okay so that is like an algebra two that's even a pre-cal question i'm gonna make this into a calculus question okay now I'm with, this is the graph of f prime, and what I want to know is questions about f, all right? So I want you to think about this. Well, actually, let's go back and let's pretend, first of all, that it is, um, let's pretend like it is f again, all right? And this is my, my pen is my tangent line, okay? So you told me it's increasing until we get to b, right? So here's the slope of my tangent line, right? Is it positive or negative? Positive, and it's getting smaller and smaller, but it's still positive, right? Okay, then when the function starts to decrease, what happens to the slope of this line? It's negative. And then when it starts increasing, it becomes positive, okay? So then, what about, what is the slope of the line right here? Zero, and here. And what kind of point is, is at, at x equals b? maximum and then d would be a minimum right so when we go to f prime okay and now i want to know when is f so you got to think this is a different f than what than this right it's not the f graph does not look like this if this is f prime when is the graph of f increasing what had to be true when my graph was increasing positive slope, right? Isn't this whole graph about slope? Mm -hmm. So this graph is positive from A to C and from E to infinity. So that means that F is increasing from A to C and from E to infinity. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so how many, just from this graph, how many max and min points would they be? Would there be, my critical points? How many would there be? Okay, what has to be true about my slope if I have a max or a min? It's what? Zero. How many times is this function zero? Twice. Three times. One, two, three, right? It's zero three times. So I have three max or min points, right? Right here, I have one right here, right here, and right here. That's when this graph is zero. Is the, okay, f prime of x, it is, do you agree that, that that graph is zero at those three points? Okay, so this represents f prime, it's the slope. If my slope is zero, I have a horizontal line, which means I'm going to have a maximum or a minimum. Okay, does that make sense? So there are three places where I'd have a max or a min. Not only that, but I know that this is changing from negative to positive. So if my slope is negative, is my graph increasing or decreasing? Decrease. If my slope is negative, is my graph increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, right? So if I'm changing, my f prime is changing from negative to positive, then f is changing from decreasing to increasing. And if I change from decreasing to increasing, I know that this is a minimum. This is changing from increasing to decreasing, which means I have a maximum. And I'm changing from negative to positive, so decreasing to increasing, even though I know that this function is increasing the whole time. That's not what we're looking at there. Okay, we good with that? Okay, that's kind of what we're looking at. I'm gonna have, we're gonna have a little chart once we get, figure all this stuff out that's gonna help you keep all of that straight. But the most important thing you need to remember is that you have to pay attention to what is my graph of and what are they asking me about? Because we're getting into where if, if you have the graph of f prime, you are probably not being asked questions about f prime. You are probably being asked questions about f. Okay, does that make sense? 
So we're trying to decide how all that works together. Okay, so let's go here. Nope, that's the wrong class. Let's go here. That would make more sense. All right, my ISN lady, my lovely ISN lady. 53. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about definitions of increasing and decreasing. If, here's your official mathematical definition. The function of f is increasing on an interval if for any two numbers, x sub 1 and x sub 2 on the interval where x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, implies that f of x sub 1 is less than f of x sub 2. Okay. Now, did you think before we read that that you knew what increasing was? Now are you questioning whether or not you know what increasing is? Right. It's fine. We don't know that. What we really need to know is that that means as x increases from left to right, your y values get bigger. Okay, decreasing. As we go from left to right, your y values get smaller, right? That's all that's happening with increasing and decreasing. Okay, so here's what we're looking for. This is f is increasing or decreasing. f prime is um, greater than zero. If f prime is greater than zero, then f is increasing. That's what we just looked at there. And if f prime is less than zero, then it is decreasing. And f prime equals zero for all x on that, then f is constant. Okay. We good on that? So we're gonna have oof, a fun chart. Let's go ahead and write it down because we're gonna, this is something that you're gonna write down over and over again. Here's why it's called fun chart. So we have f. And then you're gonna have this weird looking u and n, which is really like a concave up, concave down thing. But it looks like fun, right? It's fun. Yay. Oh, it's fun. Then we're going to go up, down. So we go up, down, up, down. Right? Then F prime, you continue up, down, and positive, negative. Okay? And you will literally want to write this on your paper sum. So here's what this tells me. If F prime is positive, then F is increasing. If F prime is negative, then F is decreasing. And if you draw your little arrows, you can tell if you have a maximum or a minimum depending on which direction you're going, okay? It kind of helps you keep it all wrapped around your, in your mind. This is basically what this says right here, this second part, but I went ahead and put in the first part. We're not really talking about concavity yet, but we will, and it'll all kind of come together, okay? Concavity, concave up, concave down. Do you hold water or not? Oh my goodness. All right, so we have what's called the first derivative test. And then we will get to the second derivative test. But our first derivative test, let C be a critical number of a function f that is continuous on an open interval i containing c if f is differentiable on the interval except possibly at c, then here's what we have, okay? So if f prime of x changes from positive to negative, so if f prime of x is, goes from positive to negative, f goes from increasing to decreasing, that's how you know you have a relative maximum, okay? If f prime changes from negative to positive, that means f goes from decreasing to increasing. That's how you know you have a relative minimum, okay? Yep, down, up, down part of that. All right, so now we are going to find critical values of f and find the intervals where f is increasing and decreasing. Then we're going to use the first derivative test to determine whether each critical value is a location of a relative maximum or relative minimum. And then we're going to explain all our results very beautifully. Okay, here we go. Here's what I want you to write first. The first thing we do is we find our critical points. Okay. This is step one. Find our critical points which is what we were doing on Friday, right? The first thing we did was find the derivative. Is this going to be a pretty simple thing to find the derivative of? Yes, f prime of x is equal to, what's three times one third? One, so I get x squared minus two x minus three. So I found the derivative. To find my critical points, I want the zeros of f prime. So I set that equal to zero. and then I need to solve for x. What do I need to do in order to solve for x? Factor. 
So zero is equal to x and x. And what are my two numbers? Negative three and positive one, right? Which means that x is equal to negative one and three. So I found my critical points. Everybody good so far? All right, so step two then is find where f prime is positive and negative. Okay. Find where f prime is positive and negative. How do you think we can figure that out? I have the zeros. I don't want to graph it. I mean, this wouldn't be a terrible thing to graph, but we're going to have some more that, that's impossible, right? So if I have the zeros, what, what have we done in the past where we can figure out if the function is just positive or negative? That's all we care about. Sign chart, exactly. So we're going to do a sign chart for f prime. Okay? How many things go on our sign chart? How many things go on here? The zeros. The zeros or the vertical asymptotes. Do we have any vertical asymptotes? No, so it's just these. So I get negative, negative 1 and 3. Okay, now this is, I found F prime. This is F, everything we're doing is about F prime, but we're going to talk about F when we're done, right? So I'm finding the sign chart for F prime. So that means I need to substitute in a number less than negative one. What do you want to pick? Negative two? Okay. Where am I putting this back in? The first, the F prime, but I would do it at this step because that's the easiest way for you to see if you're doing negative times negative or whatever. Does that make sense? So if I substitute in a negative two, that's going to give me a negative in the first one and then a what? Negative, well, negative and a negative. You multiply those together and you get positive. Then if we can use zero, we use zero because then we have to think less, right? When I substitute zero in, I'm going to get negative times positive, which is negative. If I substitute in four, that's going to give me positive times positive, which is positive. Okay. Now, remember this. If f prime is positive, what is happening to x? It's increasing. Okay. Oh, actually, let me do this. Sorry. That was f prime. Let's put f down here. f is increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. Right? Everybody good so far? Okay, so we found where f is positive or negative. Then we need to state if f or where f, this is three, f increasing or decreasing. Okay, so we're stating where that is and why, how we know. Okay, so f is increased, so I can start off by saying f is increasing. Where does F start increasing? Negative infinity, okay? Negative infinity to what? Negative one and you can use the U but you can use words now too. And then going from three to what? Infinity, okay? Because f prime is what? Positive. Or you can say f prime greater than zero. That's fine too. It's the same thing. Okay. We go with that. All right. So then we can say that f is decreasing on what intervals? Negative one to three because f prime is what? Negative. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Then the last thing we have to say is where are the relative extrema? Where are relative 
Extrema. What are extrema? Mm -hmm. Maximums and minimums. Yeah, critical points. Um, there are maximums and minimums. And notice it's relative extrema because we haven't done the candidates tests or whatever, so it's just our relative ones, and that's totally fine. So then we can say, well, do we know where they are? Where are they? Negative one and three, right? So what's happening at negative one? Do we have a relative max or a relative min? Max. And you can see that because we drew our arrows, right? Okay, so we can say F has a rel max, right? You don't have to write it all out. Relative max at x equals negative one because, now we have to be very careful. We know it's because f changes from increasing to decreasing, right? But that's not really what our evidence shows. Our evidence shows that f prime changes from positive to negative, right? So we have to make sure we're talking about f in terms of f prime. Let's say f has a relative max because f prime changes from positive to negative. You also can't just say it switches signs because, okay, but just because it switches signs, that doesn't tell me which one it is. It just tells me that it could have a critical point there. Then we can also, then we also say that F has a relative min at X equals three because F prime, bless you, bless you, changes from negative to positive. If you can remember to do your sign chart and you draw your little arrows, you just answered it all for yourself right there, right? I mean, it's, that's that. We good? What questions we got? Awesome, flip it over. Boy. All right, so same thing here. So we don't have to write like the steps one, two, three, and four where I put find critical points. You don't have to write those things. I just did on that first one, so we know we have four steps here basically. So in order to find our critical points, we have to start off with the derivative, right? So find the derivative here. Double check yourself with me. Don't just copy mine down. Okay. So remember on Friday, we were finding critical points, right? And that's when the derivative is zero or undefined. So I've got two things going on here. G prime, G prime, this is an F. So F prime equals zero, that's the numerator. And F prime does not exist, that's the denominator. So I take the numerator and set it equal to zero. So that means that 4x equals zero. So x equals zero. Right. Then I take the denominator, three times the cube root of x squared minus four equals zero. So I would divide both sides by three, right? And then cube both sides. 
agree with that. So that would just get me to x squared minus 4 equals 0. So x squared equals 4. So x equals what? Oh. You make me cry. Plus or minus, thank you. Plus or minus 2. Plus or minus, plus or minus. I'm going to bring a Nerf gun and just start a little suction cup. Shoot darts right in the middle of your head. Oh, my gosh, that'd be amazing. Except I'd miss and I'd like put your eye out and stuff. It would not be good. Okay. <clears throat> so, F prime. How many things go on my sign chart? How many? Three, right? Got one, two, three. Okay. So negative two, zero, and two. And because I drew the arrows on here, I kind of regretted, well, I kind of regretted putting my F prime, like putting the positive and negative above the line. It doesn't matter either way, but because on the fun chart, you always have F and then F prime underneath it, we're just going to be consistent and kind of put the F prime down here. We'll put F up here. Um, all right. So I'm going to substitute this into, I've got to substitute it back into both, basically. I'm basically putting it into here, right? And so if I had substitute in a negative 3, that makes the numerator what? Negative. Okay, so I can put the negative there. And for me, I have to write them down or I'll forget what the other one was. If I put a negative 3 in, then I'm going to square it. Then I subtract 4. I still get a positive, right? And so that's negative over positive, which is just negative overall. If I put in a negative 1, I get a negative in the numerator. Negative 1 squared is 1, but when I subtract 4, that's a negative number. Can I take the cube root of a negative number? Yes, and it's still a negative number, right? So that's negative times negative. That's a positive. Then if I substitute in 1, that's going to be positive in the numerator. That's still going to be negative in the denominator, right? That's negative overall. If I substitute in 3, that'll give me positive over positive. Just positive overall. Everybody okay with the sign charts? So this is what's happening with F prime. That means for F, what this tells me is that if F prime is negative, that's decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, right? Okay, we ready? So now that we know all of that, then we can talk about increasing and decreasing, right? So I can say F is We'll go with increasing. Increasing on, when is F increasing? Negative 2 to 0. Negative 2 to 0. And 2 to infinity. 2 to infinity. Because, then we have to talk about F prime. F prime is what? Positive. Then I can say F is decreasing on, what are we decreasing on? Negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to 2 because F prime, and then I, is, I, you can do that instead, less than 0 if you wanted to. Like, there's just two different ways to say, you know, however you want to say it, doesn't matter. One's not necessarily better than the other. It's just different. Okay. So then we have to talk about max and mins, right? So F has, does it have a relative max? Yes. Okay. Has a relative max at X equals what? Zero. Is that the only one? Yes. Uh, because, why? Who do I have to talk about? F prime, because F prime does what? Good. Changes from positive to negative. Okay. 
And you, remember, you can see that this is where your little, there's a max right there, which means there's two mins right here. So then F has a relative min at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2 because who? F prime. Oh, goodness. Changes. Well, I'm totally down on this next question, aren't I? Changes from negative to positive. Good. All right. What questions do you have? Oh, probably. All right. You ready for this one? Um, you tell me. Apparently, I don't have this one written over here. Is that x cubed? Because it just looks like a blur to me. I'm sorry. I meant e. Oh, that's e to the x. See, that looks like a 3. Okay. It looks like a 3 up here. But on yours, it looks like an x. Okay, it's just blurry. Okay. All right, so go ahead and take the derivative. You agree with that? Okay. So I need to set it equal to zero and I'm going to factor. Okay. I'm going to start by just, I'm not even going to factor out the GCF right now. I'm just going to factor out the CF, meaning I'm going to take out the E to the X CF, just a common factor, not the greatest common factor. Because I can factor out an X also, right? But let's just talk about E because I know that that kind of messes you up a little bit sometimes. So 2X plus X squared, then we'll deal with the rest. So when we do this, and this whole thing is equal to zero, then just like I did with the trig one, what was it, this one? So see how I did this, and then I blocked it off, and then I kept going? We're going to kind of do the same thing, and then I can factor some more there. So when we're here, we're going to now do, use our zero product property, okay? And say I need to know when e to the x equals zero, and when 2x plus x squared equals 0. Okay. Now, e to the x. When does e to the x equal 0? What number can I substitute in for x to make that 0? Do you know what the graph looks like? Is it an exponential? Yes, it's an exponential. It's e to the x, there's an x in the exponent, right? E is just some number. It's like 2.718, right? The actual value doesn't even matter. It's some number to an exponent, right? And so if there's no shifts or anything, it just looks like this. Is it ever zero? No, because we have an asymptote, right? So we don't have to be experts. We just need to know it's exponential. So this, this doesn't exist. So this is kind of, this part's kind of irrelevant as far as the zeros are concerned. Okay, you with me on that? Okay, am I ever going to get a negative answer out of it? No. Okay, so think about that too. All right, so then here, when I factor this, I can say this is x times 2 plus x equals 0. So that means my zeros are x equals 0 and negative 2. I wrote them out of order, but I don't want to erase, so that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Now, because I'm doing a sign chart, I would actually like the fully factored version of this. Um, but let's just talk about it this way. Does, is, is there any x value that I'm going to substitute into this that's going to make it 0 or a negative number? No. So this really, as far as signs are concerned, that doesn't affect anything, does it? So it's not like I'm just willy-nilly ignoring something, but I don't need to worry about it for my sign chart. You with me on that? So I'm not even going to worry about read rewrite any of that. I'm just going to make my little sign chart. And on it is just going to go negative 2 and 0. They absolutely need to be in the right order for this. 
f prime. And I really only have to look at this since that's not going to affect anything. If I substitute in a negative 3, that's going to give me negative times negative as positive. If I substitute in a negative 1, that's going to give me negative times positive, which is negative. If I substitute in a positive, everything's going to be positive. Therefore, f is increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. You think you can write out the explanation here? Write it out all by your little lonesome. You got this. I'll write it out too so you can check yourself. Out there, you can check yourself. I'm going to give you the assignment that goes with this. Still got some time, like about a minute or so before the bell rings, but it's your assignment. Make sure you do it. What is this? Somebody's notes. Assignment? No, somebody else's notes that they just left there. <laughs> 